Hey everyone, welcome to another offline TV podcast. It's me, Disguised Toast, and boy, did I miss you all. It's been a while. Today I'm joined by two very lovely guests. We have Sidion. Hi. And Quarter Jade. Hey. You know it's gonna be a banger, so <laughs> strap in. What are you doing? Uh, I'm supposed. To, that's how you do an intro. Oh, it's oh. Yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, it. What was wrong with it? It, uh, it just like we were all chilling so nicely, and then you started screaming. Um, it was really abrupt. Today we have a variety of great topics, but first let's talk about what's happening this week. The big V. Valentine's Day. Oh, I was thinking Valorant or virginity. <laughs> I, like, oh. I thought virginity too yeah. at first, and I was like, "Why are we going to talk about that?" Okay, I thought the after dark section was later, but okay. Well, it is also related to virginity because some people might lose theirs tomorrow on Valentine's Day. You think so? Oh yeah, definitely. This comes out Thursday. Oh, what is that? Well, what day is it? Either already have Oh. Comment below. If you Did you lose your virginity, your virginity this week? <laughs> if there was a day to lose your virginity, it would be Valentine's Day. I mean, I guess, or I mean, just any day is fine. <laughs> Birthdays. You know, majority of people are born in November because of that too. I'm born in November. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's baby. Valentine's baby. Mm -hmm. What did you want to talk about that pertains to Valentine's Day? What do you guys have plans? See, Jody, you're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. What's your expectations for Valentine's Day? Um, John and I are gonna go have dinner, and that's about it. I haven't really thought about it other than that. Like, I don't really expect anything. What expecting versus like wanting? You're not expecting anything. Would you want something? Um, some attention. Oh. Oh. Yeah, like if he, as long as he's like, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, John and I haven't even exchanged Christmas gifts yet. We're kind of behind. That's okay. So, you guys are busy. Yeah, maybe we'll exchange Christmas gifts on Valentine's Day. That sounds like a good idea. I really want. Okay, you think? No, okay, John. Well, no, I can't give it away. Never mind. John will never know. I know I was thinking, like, is he going to see this? In no. Time? I mean, it'll come out Thursday. It comes out after Valentine's Day. So I just have to make sure to give him this gift before Thursday. Yeah. I got him. You know the um, little, the, the meme where it looks like a ball sack and it's blushing? I added blush to it. You have to know what I'm talking about. This meme. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a little, he just, like, I don't really know. Describe to the audio listener. Is. Um, imagine a chubby penis ball sack thing, but the but it, it's all combined into one and it has hands and it's crossing its hands on its ball sack and it's blushing and it has a long nose. Yeah, it's like an alien from Star Wars. Yes, it looks like it, for, right? It yeah. is from Star Wars. Yeah. And Star Wars aliens look like penises? Yeah. Well, I don't know if that particular penis alien was in Star Wars, but it looks like someone from Star Wars. Yeah. Anyways, um, this is John and I's favorite meme. And, and so you, I bought him this. That not exists. The meme. That sounds like I bought him an NFT. Did not buy him an NFT. Um, I bought him like a sculpture of it. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it's like a literal like glass sculpture of it, and I'm gonna draw a blush on it. Was it like a pre-made thing, or you had to special request? It? No, no, like, no. Someone's this, making. You know what's this. actually crazy is somebody is out there making this. Many people on Etsy actually you can buy. Sorry that. Who didn't turn it off their yeah, phone? Do not disturb. Do not disturb. You don't respect time. my time or yeah. Sydney's time here. It's the tacos I ordered <laughs> for all of us, by the way, <laughs> and it's Sorry. coming in ten minutes. Okay, thank you for the cool. tacos. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Good stuff. What are you guys doing for Valentine's Day? Um, I'm going to be streaming, and I had this idea a long time ago that I never mm, did but I had my viewers send in their dating apps. Like, mm. you know, like, oh, this is like my Tinder profile or whatever. And I'm gonna be going through them and telling them why they're single. It's gonna Goddamn. Be really fun. Yeah, why they're single on Valentine's Day. Mm. That's my plans. Are you gonna be very honest? Are you gonna be nice about it? Um, Probably like a mix of both. Like, I'm not gonna be mean, of You'd course, mean. but like if there's someone you with a fish mean. picture, I'm gonna make fun of them for their fish picture. But they caught what a if big they, fish. What if that's their hobby and they love to fish? But that's like a meme. That's But that's like, you can't. 
stop someone well from- then what then what am i supposed to say I'm like oh great profile next great profile next <laughs> i'm gonna be like the fish pick is whack Take a picture with the dog. Everybody loves dogs. <laughs> it is true. Actually, you're trying to like a- appeal to the majority. Yeah. Technically. Or actually, I've seen the argument that you should go as far possible with like your dating profile. That you should be mm-hmm. like so specifically you. Like mm-hmm. you should post like your fish thing and like like be kind of absurd in your comments because then you only you're like basically weeding out. Yeah. Yeah. Post the fish pic so that I can swipe left. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Because somebody out there will swipe we'll right, swipe but it right. won't be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's my lens. Have you have you guys been on these dating apps? I have been on dating apps. Is there any trends that are like red flags, like the fish thing? Like, because when most guys guys don't see other guys' profile, mm. so I promise you, when they're putting the fish picture, they're like, "This is a banger Wait, right that's here." That's a crazy phenomenon. Like, why do they always have pictures with fish? Because the, the act the of guys. catching a fish is like very masculine. It's like, oh, I'm catching my own dinner kind of deal. And it's like, wow, it's oh. a big fish. I want to show this off to show that I have hobbies outside of like just staying indoors all mm. the time. And the fish is like an achievement to other men. Yeah, that's you're appealing to men. Yes. I you, don't give a shit. Yeah. Wait, a it's really the Oh, my thought was guys don't generally take selfies because they think they're like not comfortable doing so and so then the only pictures they have are pictures that other people have taken mm, that is and the only time that they're going to take is when hey man i got this fish yeah, <laughs> take a photo. Sure. and then they have this fish photo yeah well like it's always random photos like i'm in a bowling alley with my friends and then you don't know who it is kind of thing yeah because yeah, like when you make those profile pictures they're like hey upload five pictures and yeah. guys are like i don't have yeah. pictures yeah. that i just take off myself so it's gonna be like yeah fish pictures so then really? is it a red flag if someone, if a guy has a bunch of pictures, of, like if they're all selfies, all five photos? No, I think it's just someone who like spends a lot of time taking care of their, you know, I take, No, no, no. I think it should have a mix. It really should. Five selfies? No, no one's gonna have five selfies on their profile. You have like one of you, another of you, one your friend took, one of you and your friends, but like zoomed in. You're at a fair. You and an animal. Yes. Not a fish. Yes. Can't, what if, you can't, it's not all selfies. What if it's the fish photo, but they're like, they spin it. So it's like them holding like the, the hook or something, but there's like a banana on it or there's like a monkey on it. Like it's not the fish photo. It's their meaning. It's that. like a twit. Yeah. Yeah. I funny. love that shit. Funny. I love, I love funny. Boys yeah. write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Weird to see just like an <laughs> influx of banana photos <laughs> on a fish hook. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is guys don't know how corny they're being. If they could see other guy profiles, they'll probably be like, oh wait, I do that. I I post those pictures. I say like those things. Cause there's a lot of repeat patterns. Mm. Like girls in Ugg boots. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love my Ugg boots and I will die on that hill. You might have to, man. You I might have to. They are comfy though. They're the best. I grew up with Uggs. I love Uggs. Yeah. Not the greatest it. fashion. I don't give a fuck, honestly. They're just the best. You know? Oh, okay. Speaking of, have you guys seen the Astro Boots? I love that- them. I love them. No, no who did I just no. see? Do you know what we're talking about? Big red boots. The big red boots. The big this fucking red boots. This guy that I, I don't know his name. Is it Wisdom? Probably. It's a really famous guy on TikTok. Fashion, super fashion crazy guy. fashion. Yeah, I yeah, love always, the way he yes. styled. Okay, it's well, so fucking good. That man can do no wrong. He can style, yeah. Like, this guy just looked, are you serious? Yeah. But isn't it crazy? Well, but like, look, I just think he looks so good. Okay, but have you seen the memes of people trying to take them off and no. they can't get them? He said he had to cut the back yes. of them. People cannot get them off their feet. Like they get stuck in the boots and there's like literal videos of people laying on their backs as they're getting like the boots pulled off of them. They're like getting yanked on the floor. They're just not practical. No, I mean, they, I don't think they're practical. so uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't also think you can walk in, but he looks cool. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think anyone would wear them like no. normally. No. Why did they go viral? I watched this TikTok of this lady who's really into like, she's really into fashion, but she also studies like the science behind it. And she was basically saying, we're entering this realm. I'm not gonna say it as eloquently as she did. And she had a really pretty accent, but basically we're entering this realm of like hyper reality in fashion Hmm. where things like, virtual reality is looking so much like reality that why can't reality look like virtual? And so we're bringing those Hmm. pieces out of like, beloved characters and like from video games or cartoons or whatever and then applying them to us um and this is just like the first big thing that jumped out of that trend but it has been like a micro trend for a while i think that 
it is it would work if it's more practical like you can't yeah. walk in those or, yeah, take, or them take them off them apparently off. yeah yes. so ridiculous yeah i've been raging about the big red boots for days i mm. think they're awful but i don't think anyone's gonna realistically wear. i mean i don't know no i don't think i'll ever see anyone in real life wearing them no yeah agreed so what are you gonna do on valentine's day <laughs> I'm going to stream. <clears throat> have fun. Thank have you. Have a great stream. <laughs> Thank you. What about you, Broden? What are you doing on Valentine's Day? I think I'm working. Just spending time on me, you know. Do you promise? <laughs> I promise, you yeah. promise? You're not going to go out at night? Nope. Okay. I'll be here. Right with you. <laughs> <laughs> Do people go out on Valentine's night? That's probably a thing. I huh? am going out on Valentine's. Just no, sorry. I, I thought like out. Oh. Oh, I bet you that's when you would meet someone. Yeah. Because everybody's like, oh, God, I'm so alone. I'm single. Like, might as well go out. Yeah. Do girls feel like pressured on Valentine's Day to be with someone? I think everybody does uh, to some extent. <laughs> I totally was like, no. Oh. <laughs> but but I yeah I, I only speak on myself. Yeah, I think you probably don't feel fresh pressured, but I think the general population probably, probably feels does. a lot of pressure. Yeah. I like, mean, it's like all everywhere. It's crazy. It's also like always in grocery stores and stuff, and yes. for months, like yes, <clears throat> yeah. I think there's a general pressure. Yeah. Well, tune in next week to hear how, how our Valentine's Day went. Well, let's get into the first topic of the day. <laughs> yeah, how long did we spend talking about things we weren't meant to talk about? <laughs> Well, well, on this podcast, you're not meant to or unmeant to talk about anything. It's whatever you feel like. But the first topic of the day, <laughs> provided to us by our roommate, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Hi, Sean. The Last of Us. Mm. It's a great show, and it's based on a video game. Mm-hmm. Which is surprising because most video game TV shows don't do so well. What's another? Yeah, I was I'm like, do they not do well? What's another example? Oh, Halo yeah. became a TV show. That was bad. I heard. Didn't yeah. watch I it. But yeah. Yeah, you saw Master Chief's face. Oh, Forbidden. I don't like that. Forbidden. I think there was a weird sex scene in there. What? Too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> What other TV show? There's a new Mario movie with Chris Pratt. I feel like it's going to be good. I can't wait to watch <laughs> yeah, I it. I actually feel, feel like wait. it's going to be good. Like, <laughs> fuck Chris Pratt, but I feel like everything else is going to be so entertaining about it. Yeah. And it's like such a big franchise that there's got to be money in it, so it'll be generally okay. I mean, I mean, who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm excited. And you guys have not played through The Last of Us. No, I tried. I tried, but I was too scared. Like, I was like, I don't I get really scared in single player games. So watching a TV show is just a fun, like, new experience. Like, mm. anything can happen. I have yeah. no idea. Like, I don't know anything. Yeah, I have no idea. Do the you know everything? I played the game. Mm. And it's a very faithful adaptation. The Last of Us spoiler alert. Three, two, one. So a gay couple dies in the game? Um, you meet, one of them's actually alive. That's the one oh. main deviation. Is that uh, one of the gay couple was alive? So did he? He's all alone without his partner. Also, yeah. sp- spoiler alert for anyone spoiler listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry. We are. We do have a whole segment yeah. about it. So the gay well, couple about it. Can we? <laughs> Not can really we add a cut it. where it says spoiler alert? And spoiler then, alert. Spoiler yeah, alert. Yeah, that before that, so that <laughs> people don't. Mm. That'd be really sad. Yeah. Have you watched the latest episode? I watched it oh, with you were there. yesterday. We watched it yeah. all together. We were on the couch. Yesterday. Yeah, I remember you being there. Yeah. <laughs> in my bed. <laughs> yeah, you were the really loud one that was sprinkling. <laughs> I brought candy. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know, that was my bad. Yeah, Arguably, that. Sean's bad because he actually bought it for me. So, I mean. you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's become a weekly ritual at this house to gather and watch The Last of Us. It's been a lot of fun. Weren't you there for one episode? <laughs> No wonder I didn't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been away with COVID, you know? Mm-hmm. I wanted to watch, but I had COVID and mm-hmm. I couldn't. Mm-hmm. And that's why. Glad you're here now. Thank you. I noticed Sean wrote some questions on here for us. Mm-hmm. There's so much questions to pick from. Yeah. 
I'm Pick your favorite. To decide which one is the best one. Would you? Ra- I-, I like this segment. Would you rather? Okay. Zombies can run and open doors, or animals can become zombies. Oh hell no! On the animals, absolutely not. Imagine a elephant zombie chasing you. Cheetah. Animals can become. Wait, is this? Does that imply that animals and humans are zombies, or just animals? I think it sounds like animals and human. Well, why? Uh, Question master. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For sure, no animals. No it's animals. already hard enough <laughs> as is. Yeah. Like a fucking eagle comes out of the sky. <laughs> like you're just doomed. There's zombie nothing eagles. to say. Yeah. Hell. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Bird, bird zombies would be scary. Yeah, that sounds awful. Like just small animals, like rat zombies. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Ant zombies. Ant zombies. I'd die. It's like first round. I'd be the first wave of people dead. It would be awful. Yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't been like a thing, like a made trope. Sean said ants aren't animals, so you can trust them. Oh. Okay, I think he's just been on the ant side <laughs> since I had problems. Wait, ants aren't that. animals? Well, they're technically insects. Which are part of the animal kingdom. Kingdom, yeah, technically. I'm with you. Yeah, take that question, master. <laughs> what is the definition of an animal? Is a hey, jellyfish Siri. an animal? Yeah. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> is a sea and I don't Anem- know how to say it. An enemy? Is that how you say it? Yeah, sea and enemy. And see an enemy. An enemy. I thought it was until now. Yeah. I know he questioned me. An enemy. But he didn't even know. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just verifying. A living organism that feeds on organic matter, typically having specialized sense organs and nervous system, and able to respond rapidly to stimuli. A doobie ant. An ant. Well, I didn't really question that an ant wasn't an animal. Okay. Cool. (laughs) What about plankton? Is a plankton an animal? Is a plankton. Because <laughs> zombie plankton seems kind of scary. You can't even see them coming. Yeah. I probably wouldn't be in the water if there were like zombie Ooh. animals at all. Phytoplankton are plants. Zooplankton are animals. Great. <laughs> I'm so Great. glad that I have Gonna go knowledge. with zombies running and opening doors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, me too. Me too. <laughs> Would you prefer zombies to be blind or zombies to be deaf? Deaf. Blind. Mm. I just think of. No, okay, I take it back. Zombies are blind. <laughs> okay. See? They yeah. can hear. You can hear. Deaf? Oh <laughs> no, I stepped you. in glass. I don't know how to make a glass step. Blind. Noise. I want zombies to like be that. blind. <laughs> really? So you they can only yeah. hear. But that's like a quiet place now. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, I think never that we can hear. See, I feel like we can just kill them so easily. <laughs> Have you seen a quiet place? <laughs> <laughs> Those are zombies though. They're like. <laughs> Wait, also the the, uh, the clickers in Last of Us. Yeah, they like, killed them just fine. Blind. I don't know. They struggle with it <laughs> in the second episode. But that's because they have a big head and stuff. I think they've got muscle to them. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going, I would prefer deaf zombies because I think I'm way better at like sneaking and I don't have to worry about noise. That sounds really nice. Does that mean that a zombie will just like on sight see you and go for you? I think think that's how they work. Yeah. Yeah. But once they lose sight of you, they can't find you. It's like, oh, where'd you go? I can't hear you. Yeah. Like I could. I do agree that's easier. Yeah. I could play the greatest. Couldn't I just put a mannequin like in the street and they'll just go for it? Pipe bombs. Like in Left (laughs) 4 Dead. You have deaf or blind zombies and you throw pipe bombs everywhere and they die. How many pipe bombs are you gonna carry on you? <laughs> so many. I mean, left or dead, you get two. Like. <laughs> so I feel like that would be, I feel like we would win versus blind zombies. Sorry, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm getting I'm, confused in my head on like what perk they have when they are. The perk. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Why don't you, you can carry flashbangs for the vision zombies. Dude, they're not as fun. There's no way. <laughs> well, like I think about flashbangs in real life. I yeah. think they kind of like hurt you too. Yeah, I agree. But I've also never been in war, so I don't know. Wouldn't a pipe bomb hurt you too? No. If it's affecting his his sound. Beep, beep, beep. I'm already far away. 
She's so fast. Yeah, I'm just running. <laughs> She's so fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had the discussion before. Well, I had it before, but um, if you get bit, would you tell people if you got bit by a zombie, yeah. knowing that they would kill you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I would imagine that I'd probably. Let's say you can live uh, a week, but you will die after one week. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Well, this is a spoiler, so never mind. I can't really. Well, you can just say spoiler. Man. Don't listen so to for the next thirty seconds. And then we can do an end spoiler. Okay. Yeah. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> um, when the <clears throat> kid got bit and then he, she didn't tell, like the brother didn't have the chance to say goodbye. So I would want to tell so that I can like have my peace that everyone can like say, like, if, especially if I have a week, God, that's great. Like that's like best case scenario. We have like some time and then I go and like off, fuck off in the forest for a little, for eternity. Right. End spoiler. <laughs> nice. Let me flip it on you. Let's say you have COVID and you're checking into a Taiwanese hotel because you're there for Chinese New Year's. And they're like, hey, are you feeling sick? Because, you know, if you are, you can't stay here. And we, you, we, you would have to like refund your room. And they hand you a piece of paper that says, yes, I'm sick or no, I'm not sick. Which one would you check? Can I go to another hotel? Nah, it's Chinese New Year's. Everything's booked. Everything? Everything. What happens if I can't get a hotel? Probably like you go sleep in like a karaoke room. Stay at a McDonald's or something. There's not a lot of twenty four hour places. And in you one hundred percent know you have COVID. Oh, uh, you took two tests and they both showed up as uh, positive. I would sit in my room, I guess, and isolate and pray. So you would tell the hotel that you know nah, you feel fine. Well, I can't sleep on the streets. Do you feel justified? I'm asking a hypothetical question that has no relevancy in real mm. life. Mm. Yeah, none. Um, I would fear for my well-being if I had to sleep on the streets in Taiwan. Yeah, so I, I would probably just mask up and hope and sit in my room until I'm for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you would tell people you had like a zombie bite. At the hotel? No, while well, in the apocalypse. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't? <laughs> just curious. Just you know. Well, I found out something about myself on my Taiwan trip. <laughs> <laughs> Is that I don't think I'm the kind of guy to say that I've been bitten or that I have a contagious illness because I don't want to be like cast out from the group. <clears throat> and I would much rather just be part of the group until the very end. Because like by the time I die, I'm not going to be around anymore. But you're dooming everyone else around you. I, I, I'm like gone, Like you can't though. mask up as a zombie, you know? <laughs> so you're saying if you got, say you were like patient zero in our house, you got bit. You wouldn't tell us that you got bit. And then you'd turn into a zombie and then bite all of us. Well, if I told you guys I, I got bit, are you going to let me stay? What if I like put you in a little cage over there? <laughs> I don't want to be in a cage. I want to like hang out with you guys. With the last remaining days of my life. So then why can't you just tell us so that we can be like, oh, like, let's yeah. go hang out. You're not going to just stay that. You're going to. What if it's for a week? You're going to put I me in the cage. I would hang out with you. up. So if we knew how long you had, I'd hang out with you until it, it got to the point where I was like, oh, well, he's probably going to turn within the next 12 hours. Well, if you don't we'd know lock how you up, long And had. then. Well, if we don't know, then comes. yeah, you're dead. GG's. And that's right. why people don't say when they get bit no, by a zombie. There's different scenarios, you know. Sometimes, like, yeah, you're like, it's so early in the round. But, like, you know, I imagine it's like we're, we're like a couple months in, you know, we, we kind of understand how it spreads. You get bit. If it takes a whole week, you know, we can hang out for like six days. Seventh day, though, you gotta walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm of the mindset that I would rather die with my human dignity, you know? Like, I don't wanna be. There's the option where you you know you like wait all six days and then you send me off into the forest, but then I'm gonna go kill people. I'd rather you kill me before I have the opportunity to hurt others. How are you, Broden? I, I want you to let me turn. You want to be a zombie? What if well, it's you on the inside? I've already. I think we've talked about this before. I've already said that like if a zombie outbreak happens, I'm running towards the zombies. <laughs> so I joined the winning team earlier. That's grim. <laughs> But then I win. Okay. 
Doesn't seem like a very fun experience though. Maybe I'll go up the ranks and become like a big one or like a general or something because I did it so early. Mm. But then like, what if you like eat your mom? Then she's with me too. We're on the same team. Okay. What are clickers in Last of Us? Like what, why are there different versions of zombies? I think the longer you're infected, the more evolved you become. Brenda's you're point. on to something, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you're on yeah, to something. <laughs> But would you tell us? Like if you got bit? What if I just left? That's so sad. That's, yeah, you have to tell us. Because then we're like, oh shit, would, now we gotta go save Brody. Yeah, I would literally be spending all my resources to go like yeah. save one of the fam and then you're, I would walk us on your zombie. Yeah, you should tell us. And then we eat three cans of food and now we're gone. Now and then we, short supply. Okay, wait, if, if I told you, would you just push me out or would you kill me for the greater good? If you wanted to go be a zombie, I'd be like, okay, fucking weirdo, bye. But I would tell you to run. <laughs> I'd be like, go run as far as you can. Yeah, yeah. I don't ever see you again. Because we have to kill you when you're a zombie. That would yeah, be really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Great discussions all around. <laughs> and for the record, I'm not talking about myself with the hotel COVID thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going to sleep on the streets? No. <laughs> so you guys would also in that circumstance I can understand why you said no but I would be so caught like I would scrub my body yeah. I would wear gloves and like triple quadruple mask not talk to anybody and then go sit in my room yeah but I can understand where you're coming from yeah hypothetically but to be fair like for from. example like when Sydney's had COVID and like we're just living together I remember there's a time at our old place, like when Cindy and I would interact, she would like be like, I'm going into the living room. She work, wears gloves. Like, I imagine it's like that. You wear gloves, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, um, I just stayed in my room and did not let anyone. Every time they would come, hey, housekeeping. And I'm like, no, thank you. It's good. That's, you know, she's like, this motherfucker has COVID or nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I would try and hide uh, the test, for, like so they don't see it and get alarmed. Mm. <laughs> I'm not a good person. Shove it in your <laughs> shoe and like tail it in your luggage. Oh my god! There's a a topic on here that I personally like to talk about because mm -hmm. it relates to uh, content creation. Mr. Beast cures blindness. Mm -hmm. How generous of him! Yeah. But even so, he's uh, facing some criticism, like some people like poking fun at him or like saying he's exploiting. Good points by both sides. How do you guys feel about him curing the blind? What's okay. your take on it? Um, I think that Mr. Beast is or has done a lot of things that are good, especially like behind the scenes that I don't see a problem with him putting light on it. I also think a lot of people like say, like, oh, you're not doing it for the right reasons or whatever. But I think a lot of people do it for the wrong reasons. And it's still like a good thing. And you're still somebody's not blind anymore. Like, that's pretty good to me. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a thought on it. I think it was good. I, I was like, oh, I watched a video. I was like, damn, like, cool. Okay, now imagine a video where YouTubers like, today I'm going to give a hundred bucks to every homeless person I see. He <coughs> hands them a hundred bucks and like films their like joy and happiness and then puts it on YouTube. Does that feel the same or any different? Um... It's a, it's a. I personally view it a little differently, but I think it's because Mr. Beast has like a reputation to me. Like I, I know of him. When I see those random videos of like guys who like just give away things to homeless people, I do think it is a good thing, but it has a different air to it. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I like Mr. Beast compared to these individuals, and I'm biased, but it feels. Mr. Beast feels better. I think it's also just a two, like such a different thing, like homelessness versus sight. Being blind. Yeah, like yeah. you're literally giving someone something, whereas like you're helping someone who's homeless, but you're not curing their homelessness kind of thing. Like you're not giving them a home, which is also really hard. 
that's also another video for Mr. Beast, basically. Like, <laughs> no, not, a, not an average human can do that. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like uh, Mr. Beast does do a lot of good. And I, I, when I watched the video, I wasn't put off at it, by it at all. Mm. So then when I heard like all of the discourse on social media, I was actually a little surprised. But I guess not at the same time because people will always shit on everything. But to me, as someone who has like a general idea of what Mr. Beast does and has like seen a couple of his videos, some of them are like really fun and silly and like stay in the box and I'll give you $50,000. <clears> sorry. And then some of them are a little more heartfelt like this one. I feel, I felt good about it. I was like, oh, that's cool. He's still cured a thousand people's blindness. You know, like he still did a good thing. And I think generally he does do good things. And in order to do those good things, he sort of has to drive engagement. And so I think if people are consenting to, you know, like being on camera, then in order for him to do more good, I'm not mad about it. Yeah. I think his thumbnail was a little, was the only part was like, Mm. But and, oh, the, the crying child yeah. with happiness. <laughs> yep. But I, but I, I'm sure. Like, I know that he has like a whole team devoted to thumbnails and just like figuring out how to get people to click. So I get it. But yeah, yeah. I think uh, monetizing charity is a very difficult thing to do because people believe that oh, you should just be good for the sake of being good, but. In order to do those things, you have to also get views because views will then allow ad revenue and sponsorship. And doing that means clickbaiting, having a child crying on your thumbnail. It's like, it's a, it's very YouTube, but if the end result is blind people being able to see, I think that's a very small price to pay. Um, it's something like, I think a lot, a lot of us struggle with, like when we do nice things on stream or like in a video you'll always get comments like oh they're only doing it because they're being filmed or like they're just doing it for attention it makes being like charitable very hard sometimes it's like oh i have to do this in private and never tell anyone mm. well i'm a bad person but um no i agree it's like if you can make being charitable profitable it's like it's a win-win situation mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah. How do you feel, Broden? It's interesting because if he had done, like if he had cured 1,000 people of blindness but not made a video and people were like, yo, he like cured my grandma, he, he would get way more respect points, I would say. Because it's like, then it's obviously like he wasn't trying to go for it um, or like publicize it. Like, I feel like when it, when, when someone publicizes that for him in a way, it's like, oh damn, I, okay, major respect. But then because it's like, he's putting the content forward, you're always going to watch it with like a little tingle in the back of your head of like, yeah, who's this for, you know? Um, I feel like, okay, I don't know much about it though. I feel like Mr. Beast does plenty behind the scenes to help others. But I honestly don't know if that's like 100% true. But like, Where did I would you hear that from? from? I don't know. <laughs> Do you mean Brody? Me? I wouldn't fully. I don't we know. Got part <laughs> See, I heard no, that from you. <laughs> no, so I remember we were sitting on the couch watching a bunch of Mr. Beast videos for the first time. Maybe it was drawn? I don't know. Well, actually, don't quote anyone. I don't know. Maybe I made it up. Maybe I dreamt it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it was true. I feel I feel like he would yeah. give and not publicize it as well. See, but it's also annoying kind of on that same note and then going back to something that you said earlier, it's like if you do <clears throat> donate to charity or hold, host a charity event or stream or whatever and then you do it, people are like, oh, you're really doing this because it's on camera. But then if you don't post about it, people are like, mm -hmm. you don't do anything. That's so true. They don't do anything bigger and it's like you have no idea the yeah. amount of like charitable donations or like things I'm doing behind the scenes. But if I were to post a story of me like out doing something, you're going to make fun of me. And if I don't do it, you're going to make fun of me. <laughs> so, but, but then you have like a whole shed of, of ammo when someone's like, you're not doing anything. And you're like, oh yeah. Yeah. And you just blast them. And then everyone's like, oh my God, he's a hero. <laughs> yeah. But that's also <laughs> like seen as equally obnoxious. Like if someone's like, oh, you don't do anything. And then you post like, here's a screenshot of every yeah. charity I donated to in 2022. Then it's like, Whoa, okay, dude. Like, you just can't do anything right on the internet. <laughs> Random 
thought. When you guys donate to places, for example, that like they're public, like it's a, I don't know, like you know when you go to charity sites and it'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, so-and-so, top donor, whatever. Do you guys put your name or do you put something else? It depends. If it's like a local charity or like say my friend is like hosting a GoFundMe or something like that, I don't put my name. I'll just like anonymous. But if it's like one of those big things, like like thousands of people are donating, I'll be like, Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I put my name. I don't know why, but I feel it's almost in the same way. Like it's public and it's it's kind of like I don't want people to think that I'm only donating this to put my name out there because I have like gotten those comments. So then I just put random things like purple or <laughs> <laughs> silly or like you're the anonymous sub gifter. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just put something really, really random. Like I think the, the closest thing that I've ever signed my name is just like QJ, like something like, mm. that you wouldn't even like look at because it is like this, there's this weird thing where it's like, oh, you're just doing it for, I don't know, recognition. Yeah. It's loose, loose. It is. But then you rob yourself of that feel good feeling of someone going, oh, thanks, Quarter Jane. I really appreciate it. Or is the I've idea never, of knowing you helped enough for you? Um, when I am donating, I'm thinking like the recent time that I donated was when Hassan was raising money for Turkey. I started my eyes switching. He wasn't on stream. I like did it off stream. So it wouldn't have mattered either way. <laughs> Oh, okay, but that's interesting too because now that I think about it, I love when I'm doing a charity thing and my friends donate and they post their name. Like I love like my most recent charity event, like Peter donated yeah. or like Tarek donated. It's like, oh, it's really nice to see those names and be like, oh, like be able to thank your friends. I think it's tough, man. What do you do? I think if it was you, I would post my name. Mm. If it's Hassan, I actually think I would never post my name. If it was like Broden or whatever, like I would. But if it's mm-hmm. like far removed from my friend group, I would. But I do agree. Like I love yeah. being like, oh yeah, Peter, thanks. Yeah. Mm. Just a bunch of bobbleheads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you skip the uh, the DSG stuff. I don't like talking about myself. But, but it's not you, it's it's DSG. It stands for disguise. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't have to highlight that. You know? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, I recently started a, an esports team called DSG. We're playing in the Valorant Challengers League. And I've been watching them compete. It's like watching my kids go off to war. Mm-hmm. And every day, like, I have a lot of stress and I worry about them. And I don't know if they're going to win or lose. It's very nerve wracking. Just pro scene in general seems so hard. Like, even today's games that I was watching, I'm just like looking at Twitch chat and the public is so negative. Like, unless you pop the fuck off, is it positive? So, like, some great chat loves him. Somebody whiffs like something and they're like, yeah, you don't deserve to be here. My like, God, you've never whiffed in your life. But I, at the same time, like, I guess their justification is like, you're a pro, you should. But it's like, you're also not a robot. And these, yeah. the, it must be, or I imagine it's so hard to be a pro player. Not only do you have all these eyes on you, you're on a stage, or like, if you make it that far, you're on a stage. And like, that just <sighs> stresses me out even thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot of these kids are just trying to make it, yeah. like, trying to play in the mm-hmm. scene. And, um a lot of them like i recently had dinner with two of my players and just hearing them talk about like the friends who go through like really terrible contracts Mm. and they just get stuck in contract jail and they can't play and they just want to play video games um some teams was like one of the teams um this team called sonic esports they had a valorant team and as soon as they didn't qualify for like the challengers event like the the twitter was just like big thank you for uh playing with us this year guys uh and each of them was like yeah we're free agents now we don't we all got dropped Hmm. and like they can just do that Hmm. um because uh there's no real rules when it comes to contracts like that like when i was going through like my contracts with my players it's like 
well, no matter what happens, you have to pay them like a year's salary. And if you do let them go, you're giving them like months of severance. Um, but that's because like the players negotiated for that. And seeing like the darker side of esports is uh, eye opening. I also learned that esports companies don't make money. <laughs> yeah, it's been a running joke. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard that actually. <laughs> yeah, th there's a reason why all of them are trying to get into content creation um because there's just no money in esports there's way more money you know just paying a streamer to be funny uh so yeah i've been losing i've been bleeding cash i'm on track to lose half a million this year oh my God. so if you guys want to buy our merch we don't have any <laughs> but when we do you know throw a couple of bucks my way that would be greatly appreciated does it feel like you're playing a super high risk like idle game it's like it's kind of like horse racing, except I'm breeding the horse and betting on it. <laughs> and if I win, there's also still no money. <laughs> Cause like, if we win this whole thing, it's like- The horses get to eat. <laughs> not even, um, if we win this split, we get $20,000. We get $20,000, which is um, enough money to pay four players salary for a month. A month? A month, just one month. That means one player is not even getting paid that month. <laughs> so there's there's very much no upside to winning. Yeah. Even you're just trying to get into BCT next year. Yeah, along That's with like crazy to me G two TSM phase. Yeah. Did you know all of that about the the numbers before you did this? I knew how much I would spend, but I thought I would like make some money. <laughs> And we're not making any money. <laughs> but you also don't have merch or anything like that. Jerseys. Yeah. I, I'd buy a jersey. That's. It'll be, we're the half a mil. Yep. Jerseys. I think like with good markup, what we make like four bucks a jersey. If you could get closer to losing less money though. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Just make really cool jerseys. And yeah. Start, get, make $10 a jersey. Just like do a lot of merch drops. Yeah, yeah. Just fuck the team. Just sell clothes. Sell, clothes? <laughs> sell apparel, actually. <laughs> Screw everything. Screw the business plan. We, we we just sell apparel for DSG now. Yeah, I mean, that's what a lot of uh, esports orgs are doing. They're signing content creators and then having them be models for their merch. Yeah. And they do like four merch drops a year. And it's like, that's how they're making money. But you don't need an esports team for that. You just need content creators and I already know content creators. Yeah. Well, actually you have the easy part. You have a bunch of friends who are content creators who could help you sell your merch. Yeah. You just have the benefit of now having a team. What, wait, what's the benefit? <laughs> um, you, 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 you get to go to lunch with them and meet them. Yeah. And you get a you get, you get all the inside scoop. And then watch parties yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, watch and, parties. Or your friends go DSG. Yeah, when we get it, we DSG. love watching your team and and your your name. Everybody, everybody knows Toast now. You gave Valorant. those kids a chance. They you, got to yes. They got to come in to play professional Valorant because you made a team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. That is arguably yeah. the best one. Yeah. Everything else that was bullshit. We were, we were trying really hard, but we got there. <laughs> But yeah, um, no, it's been quite the experience, um, learning, uh, not sure how far we'll go, but hoping, uh, everyone, uh, just has a good time. You know, these are, these are all very young kids, you know, they're like 20 years old, 22 years old, and they have their whole future ahead of them while mine is ending. And it's nice to be able to like relive my glory days through them. I think that's the main reason why I'm doing this. Hmm. That was kind of, kind of like sad, a little bittersweet there. Yeah, I think a hallmark of a great content creator is knowing when your time is up and going out with grace and humility. And this is my exit strategy. Really? Yeah. It's like he's announcing that he got bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it feels like. But he has like well over a week left. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have about a year left in me. So you would tell us if you got bit. 
No, this is an esports org and like content. Mm. I would, I would actually not tell anyone if I got bit. I'm gonna <laughs> great. say it now. Super great. Wait, so okay, let's say DSG makes it. We, you win it all. You're now in VCT for next year. Like, are you just gonna continue to just like have this team? And you just actually better question. What happens if you lose? What are you gonna do? <laughs> what happens to the team now? Uh, I'll probably keep the team for at least two more years if they want to stay. I'm worried that they're going to get poached because yeah. that's what these sons of bitches esports orgs do. One of them did it to me. Like I'm like within the first month of me doing this esports stuff, like yo, this this esports thing is kind of fun. I, I'm trying out like five players. They all seem to have good synergy. You know, we're going to practice against this like franchise established team to see how they do. And like my one of my players like just absolutely roves them, like drops like thirty kills. And then the franchise team's like, yo, this guy's pretty good. Uh, hey, man, do you want to come play with us? And of course, like, yeah. it's good for your career to say yeah. yes. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go play with them now. I'm like, wow, they can they can just yeah. do that. They can just throw money yeah. and, like, use their clout to, like, outmuscle you and, like, not even give you a heads up. It's like, hey, man, can, can we, like, talk to one of this player you're trying out? Like, uh, I'm not going to say no. It's like they don't do that. They're just like, yo, welcome to the esports scene. This is how it's done. That is really shit. Like, yeah. it really makes it so. It's good for the players. Like, everyone probably really benefits from that, but it makes it hard to, like, support a team. Like, I even just think about when we went to <coughs> Turkey and we watched all these players on Loud versus Optic. And now I'm like, well, where all, are you? Yeah. What team are you? Where NRG? Oh, okay. Like I'm like I just everywhere. Yeah, like I I just support a player and not a team. Other yeah. than literally rooting for like DSG, I'm like, oh yeah, DSG, woo. Yeah, I don't like feel any com like. Yeah, to teams because like players just Come swap teams yeah. Yeah. all the time. Yeah. But that is really fun as like a. I don't know how to word this Valorant enjoyer. A <laughs> spectator. Able, yeah, as a spectator. Thank you, Brennan. <laughs> to have a team to really cheer for now. Because I don't think that I had that before. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember even when we were in Turkey, I was like, yeah, go loud. And then I was like, cool, Optic. Yeah, Sentinels. Like, it was just whoever was playing. Like, I would pick, you have pretty colors. I'm going to cheer for you today. So it's nice that I have someone that I can cheer for the whole mm -hmm. way through. That'll be fun. Yeah. Ludwig might be picking up one team as well. Oh. I think that would be a lot of fun. A little rivalry? Yeah. yeah. There's a little rivalry. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people are paying more attention to esports now um, and trying to figure out how to make it profitable because it's just been running on borrowed money for the last five years. Like, like when you look at cryptocurrency, a lot of it was funding esports org. And since that crashed, a lot of esports org had to like fire like a lot of staff because they just uh, were actually n not able to pay for uh, all these salaries. So now it's just trying to figure out how you actually make this scene sustainable. Yeah, that's been my uh, DSG adventures. You're going to poach some of Lutz players? Apparently we did that for our fifth player after our player got poached. <laughs> and I found out, I'm like, huh. Shit. Um, spicy. Am I the bad guy? <laughs> but I didn't know. It was like, um, because we lost one of our players and we had to like find a fifth one. So we went to this like this person who was already part of another team, but he wasn't getting paid. And we're like, we can offer you a salary. And he, he's like um in a situation where he could use some money. So he ended up joining us and then leaving that team. It's like, huh. I just inadvertently, I wasn't aware of this, but I just did to another team what the, like that team did to us. Full circle, you gotta Full pay it forward. Circle. Yeah, it's a, it's a doggy dog world out here. At least the players benefit, like at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, they Somebody's get paid. paid. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Broden, you work with esports teams, right? Yep. What's like the biggest problem with them? Because you, you're responsible for the content. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen like a lot of amazing content ideas from esports or <laughs> like just um, bangers. Yeah. Majority of the time, that's not the case. No. <laughs> it's also hard because the players typically don't want to make content. They just want to play the game and get better. And so even if you have an actually really good content idea, you're like, okay, so I need like all five players. And they're like, 
sorry, you can have him for like an hour and then they're all screaming for like five days and then they have vacation or like they're seeing their girlfriend. It's like, okay, so you can't really, what's like the best content idea that I can do with like in 15 minutes <laughs> with these players and that's why it's all kind of watered down. Mm, yeah, but it makes sense. Like I wouldn't want them to create content like go yeah. be a but pro. What I will say is I feel like Valorant players are much better or like they're, they're more aware of like content creation and they feel better on camera. Like they have better, bigger personalities. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I would no, agree I with totally that agree. from the spectator's point of view. Yeah. A lot of big personalities <laughs> in Valorant. And a lot of them, the pro players stream yeah. on the side. Yeah. So many of them. It is good for them. Like I do yeah. think it's just like overall really good for them. Yeah. You guys play any fun games recently? Yeah, I play this super fun game called um, Karaoke. It's so fun. Oh, the karaoke. Yeah. It's a horror game. The one where she rode the bike. She rode the bike yes. and then she sang karaoke. You did pretty well. You're not a big fan of horror games? No, I really, like, I just can't. Like, I, my whole body goes, no. Like, I can't do it. Wait, can you explain the concept of this game? I've never heard of this. Um, I am a teenage girl in high school and my friend says hey like you want to throw some f free throws or whatever and we practice basketball and my coach comes up and says hey you're not supposed to be here and then i have to go change because we're gonna go to the karaoke room suddenly my friend is missing i get a suspicious phone call bring, bring. Mushy, mushy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really um it's just like an atmospheric horror game and it was really scary in the beginning and then Toast came and played and then it was really funny and then it yeah. So you don't have to like sing. No, well, <laughs> you kind of do. Okay. Hmm. Sure. All right. Sounds interesting. Anyways, that game was scary. I an actually fun game that I played recently was called Project Playtime. Right. Project. Yeah, because he's the one who calls it Poppy Playtime. Yes, it's and you Project make Playtime. It's not. Yeah. I loved it. Mm -hmm. It's basically Dead by Daylight, I think. Dead by Daylight's when he tends and loves. She like grinds, it runs around. Yeah. Yes, with the little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, it's basically that concept of a game, mm -hmm. but honestly better. It's very... It's like... What? You guys know Poppy Playtime? It's the monster controlled by a player? Yes. Oh, but like the mini game is like a bunch of like kid games, like very, um, what's the thing you wind up and it pops up? Jack in the box. Very Jack in the box-esque type of like aesthetic and games and things like that. Hmm. That one was really fun. We have to play it. I know you've talked a lot about it since I you really, played it. I, I want to try really it. I really liked it. Yeah. That one's not scary. It's not super scary. Like it's like, it's supposed to be like kind of like, ooh, but like it's not like, mm -hmm. Is Dead by Daylight the one where one person's a monster and the other five people are like... Yeah, yeah. and you put them on the hooks. Yeah, right? yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, put them on the hooks. And I, like for that. some reason, my TikTok algorithm were like once a month, give me a video yeah, same. of a person who's like, here's I my strategy as the ghoul. I <laughs> <laughs> and it's like them just like wrecking a whole like, yes, and then I put them on the hook here and then I leave a trap. <laughs> I think it's because I guarantee it's because Tenzin... It's on Tenzin. Oh, it's because of Tenzin. And we're like, he knows like, we're friends with Tenzin. So it's like, are you, you like this? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, that game has always bored me. Mm. I try. I tried a couple times. Yeah. I don't love it. Yeah. Like, I don't. Well, it was like good for an hour. Yeah. And I move on. Because do you play with like a friend as the monster? Usually. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it just feels like, I don't know, too very casual. I think you have to play like solo key. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Dude. pub stomping. I think once yeah. you get randoms in your game, it's actually a lot more fun. Like when we played, we had like two randoms in our game. It was really fun. The monster was a random, but I think it was one of our viewers. So mm -hmm. it was like kind of scary, but at the same time he was doing really just silly stuff. Like he would watch me run into a locker and it'd be so scary. And he would just like stare at me from outside the locker and then leave me alone. I'm like, cool. <laughs> like those kind of funny interactions that you only get with randoms. Yeah, yeah. All right, today we have a new segment courtesy of our friend Sean. It's called Guess the price, which is a legally distinct from the price is right. It's a whole separate thing. Um, and the concept is different too. We guess the price for items presented to us, but it's related to games and not other stuff. So, what? sorry. 
No. Go ahead. I I was just confused. <laughs> and I just said it out loud. <laughs> we just, he show us thing. We say, I think that $5. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, the first thing we're going to guess is the Shrek game for the original Xbox. Oh. Wait, I feel like all Xbox games were my... Hey. Oh, yeah. This no. is yourself. Screw you, man. This is a double-sided whiteboard? Of course. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> Sean spares no expense. Um, while they're uh, writing their answers, is this like similar rules where like if someone goes above the price, they're out? Or is it just whoever's closest? That's the price is right. Okay. The Which is not us. Yeah, yeah that's the price yeah. is right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Different. Cool. Okay. You seem to be close. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, I said fifty nine ninety nine because Sydney said that all games were like equal prices back in the day. They didn't have tiered pricing in 1999. Shrek, man. Is the price of it now? For Shrek? Oh, the what? price of it what? now? Hey, Important hey, distinction hey, to make, hey. Quizmaster. Like, if you were to look for it on eBay, can you pass me your eraser? Now. Well, now it's how am I? You guys can target. You guys can rewrite your right. answers. I think mine was right. So you go Based on eBay on. and you look for the original Shrek game. Yes. Wait, sorry. Wait, it's either really expensive or really cheap. So what yes. year was this? We're saying, uh, what was it? It was made in 1999? This was made on the first Xbox that ever came out. Oh, so maybe like 2001? Because I think DreamWorks formed okay. around then. 2003, 2004? Good God, man. I'm ready. I said thirteen ninety nine. I love Shrek, but I don't think anyone's paying any money for that. You'd be surprised that some people would spend maybe two thousand dollars on a Shrek CTV. So two of them, right? Two, yeah, two. maybe, yeah. yeah. So it's of four thousand dollars on like a little Shrek TV. Yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised. On that note, I said a hundred dollars because I honestly do not know. I just don't know. Shoot for the stars. Uh, I was on a similar page as Toast. I said nineteen ninety nine, so I think it would be one of the cheaper ones. Well, Sydney, I gotta say you are spot on. Ooh. Ooh. You got the number exactly right. Did you get wow. bonus points for that? I'm actually sure. surprised. It's nineteen dollars. <laughs> like I'd imagine it would be cheaper or more expensive. Like mm. it's been so long. Why is it twenty dollars? Yeah, it feels like it should be five. And the best part about this game. You know, remember, this is guess the price and not the price is right. There's an extra factor. There's a question attached to it. And this one is, what makes Shrek so revolutionary? I feel like that's a question for you. I'm a big Shrek fan. Yeah. Go but ahead. recently, I saw Puss in Boots, mm. The Last Wish. And that was a great movie. Yeah. Did you guys watch it? Yeah. yeah, it's actually so good. Did you squeal at that one scene, Toast? Like where Shrek appears for like 0. 0.2 seconds in <laughs> yeah. the flashback montage. Yep, yep. I did. I didn't know that he I was don't, for, I'm I remember like, seeing Shrek in it. Squealing was like, I, I was like, he's like giggling and kicking his feet or like squealing like, oh my God, I'm excited. Or like, I couldn't understand what he was implying. Both, think, yeah, yeah, both. I get a little bit of, yeah. Oh. And Toast confirmed he did. I can't believe that you knew what he was talking about when he said, are you squealing at that scene? Because it was Shrek. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was Shrek. <laughs> And I and, saw it too, yeah. And then at the end, they tease a sequel with Shrek. So I'm excited to see Shrek. Um, so what makes Shrek so revolutionary? I don't know. That's the thing. It's like people freaking love Shrek and I like hardly remember the movie. I'm sorry. I said it. Well. Um, Why is everyone looking at me like that? <laughs> you've seen Shrek, right, Jody? Yeah. Ooh, she like me. She's like me. Well, I'm me. scared. I know. I was like, should I say no? Because I don't really remember it. Or should I say I yes? Because it's the truth. Yeah. Like, I've seen like, it. I love it. But and like, final good. answer. I've seen it. How did you feel about Shrek? Uh, I would say I'm like a solid, like, like slightly more positive than neutral. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah. Like, that's good. overall good. Yeah, that's good. Definitely she likes it. Good vibes. Yeah. 
Okay, now finish this. Finish this <laughs> you sentence. You defused the bomb. It's okay. <laughs> Spike we'll defused. <laughs> finish this sentence. Somebody once told me the world was. Just because I don't know the song lyrics, <laughs> I, mean, I don't. Know them. I'm just bad at song lyrics. Mm. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Can you finish it, Sydney? Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. Wait, when does baloney come in or macaroni? Or? None of that is not the lyric. <laughs> Maybe I have no parody. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you know the lyrics um, to that song? Because it became really iconic from the Shrek movie. Great soundtrack usage. That's the one song Wait, from Shrek. Oh yeah, I know. and Hallelujah. Yeah, and Hallelujah, which I would say was already iconic. Which is, I think it's funny that people play at weddings because I'm like, this is a Shrek song, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it. Like and it's so good, love. it turned oh. the song into the Shrek song. And Pina Colada. Yeah, yeah everyone, that one. yeah, thinks of, if you like Pina Colada, when Lord Farquaad is, is picking the princesses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So much iconic sound. Yeah, wow. Yeah, from this, the scene with the mirror. And then the executioner is like, pick number two, my lord. And he number holds two. three songs. Yeah. yeah. I do think that's it's a good movie. That's my favorite part, I think. We should rewatch it. <laughs> we should watch it. I'm sure it's good. Yeah. I just don't, I was so young, I don't remember. Yeah. Onions have layers. 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 She said and that too. And Shrek is like an, an onion. onion. Yeah. Because you have to peel back his layers. Yeah. Yeah. That's from Shrek. And you guys knew what I was talking about, yeah, even I instinctually. Yeah. Cause it's so like revolutionary, like the story about this like monster overcoming like initial prejudice and the twist that Princess Fiona was also an ogre all along and then she gets kissed and she's like expected to turn back to a human, but she stays an ogre because it's what's on the inside that matters. It's a great story. Also, there's like donkey dragon babies. <laughs> and that was pretty iconic as well when it came out. Toast, did you know that during the production of that movie, animators would be punished by being sent to work on Shrek? <laughs> <laughs> what? The studio didn't think it would do very well. So animators would be working on other stuff. And if they thought they weren't like up to par or something, they'd be like, you're going to animator prison. You're going to go work on Shrek. <laughs> oh my God. That's hilarious. And that was just Shrek 1. I Can didn't even know there next? was a Shrek 2. What's the next Shrek question? 2 is even better Wait, than oh, Shrek oh, 1. Oh, oh, Shrek 2 is the one with the girl in sparkly dress and she sings on a piano. <gasps> Fairy Godmother. Yes. I do remember that. Wait, but I don't. All right, then which one's Shrek 3? The we, one. We don't talk about Shrek. Where. What about uh, yeah, Shrek I, Forever I did after? not know Shrek <laughs> <laughs> Shrek Shrek is one where he has kids. What? That's Shrek 4. Oh, there is a fourth <laughs> one? Shrek Forever After. You're fucking lying. We don't recognize that one. Yeah. Or Wait, 3. What's the title of Shrek 3? I think it's just Shrek 3. I think uh, so, yeah. Shrek the Third. Did you play the um, Shrek DVD game? I, I believe it was Halloween themed. No, I'm not familiar with the Shrek DVD game. Yeah, you'd put it into your DVD and then with your remote, your remote would be like quick time events. Like, which, do we go left or right? <laughs> Push your direction. <laughs> Revolutionary stuff. Revolutionary. Right? Yeah. yeah. Also, so that, we, oh. that song you were thinking about is I Need a Hero. Oh. oh. And oh, that was I the best scene. Yes, as soon as you oh, said yeah. I heard it. So, like, if I knew someone that potentially had to really like state-of-the-art shrek tvs mm -hmm. would, would you want one i mean he's probably using them all the time because it's like so expensive it's probably being i've seen him use it once for valorant meme that blew up yeah and then way. got stolen and then, got and then stolen, posted yeah. It but yeah do you think uh he got his money's worth no no i he, the first one i was like all right babe do whatever you want why did he need two I don't know. It sat in our pantry for like six months. I think basically his idea was like, this is just like, I got adult money. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna buy this. Second one was, oh, I'll like do something with this and give it away. Like it'll be the prize, the grand prize. I mean, he could still do that. Yeah, but it's, uh, it hasn't happened in a year. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. 
I thought he was treating it like gold. Like, you know how some people buy gold bars and it's like an, an investment? Oh, man. Like a saving. When the secret to think... some boots come out. Yeah. Oh, oh actually. Well, um, no, I don't think John is like that. I think the guy who sold them was like that. Because <laughs> he worked. had two of them, <laughs> yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. I mean, he got paid. That was probably like a hundred bucks at most, I'll yeah. be honest. I was talking to John about how like his name is probably talked about at the dinner table. Like, yeah, dude, I've been having these in my closet for 20 years and some guy on eBay spent $2,000 <laughs> on them. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Oh God! I'm glad we had that talk, though. Moving on. Wait, so why is it revolutionary? I just explained. No, it you here. just told me that it was it had all these iconic scenes. That's why things have iconic scenes all the time, and they're not revolutionary. Like, mm, I don't know. Anything that's quotable doesn't mean it's revolutionary. Like, I don't know. So you can't name it because they don't exist. I definitely think it exists somewhere that something's quotable but not revolutionary. It's it's just like a hero's journey, but it subverts traditional expectations because Princess Fiona, like initially, oh I see what you mean. She was supposed to be rescued, but she turns out to be this like quirky badass herself. That's kind of like rough cool. around the edges. Mm -mm. We were Got so it. close to moving on. I was just curious. <laughs> I really wanted to know the reason. Close. I, just, I was, you know, Eddie we were Murphy almost done with Shrek as Donkey. Uh huh. And yeah. then Pinocchio. That one was pretty good. Yeah, too. it's great. Gingerbread Man. Gingerbread Man. Yeah. Okay. It is good. It is good. And Lord Farquaad. It's a uh -huh. small world after yeah. all. Mm -hmm. See? You, you remember. Revolutionary. It what sticks with say? you. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it stuck, it stuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> so the next question, the <laughs> next guess <coughs> Pokemon card. Oh. Pikachu Illustrated Limited Edition. There's only 39 of these in the world. Oh, God. So, rare Pokemon Pikachu Fuck, card. I don't know Pokemon prices, but I'm just going to shoot for the stars here. I'm, I know Pokemon cards are like pretty. Yeah, those are like gold. Yeah. Like gold. they have a whole scene going on. <laughs> no, don't change your answer. Gold? Don't change your answer. I'm not. That's kind of low. All right. Sydney's just doodling, so I think you're all oh, ready. Yeah. I was drawing a I wrote 20,000. I wrote 70. What? I wrote 1,500. No, way more than that. Way you. more than that. Only 39 of them in the world. <clears throat> the closest person here is Jody. Thank God. Damn. Um, would you guys like to revise your guesses for this one? No, that's how I work. Well, just no, tell us. I what do you mean? <laughs> what the fuck? No takes backsies. All right. I'm just going to say that you guys were um, two digits off. The uh, The going price for this card is $5.275 million. Is anyone paying that though? <laughs> yeah, what? Pokemon cards are like really, like I went home and my friend had their Pokemon cards and he found like a really random one and it's valued at 20K, but it like wasn't even that special. Like he's just like, yeah, like this one isn't, like it gets way more than that. That's why I said 70K because I didn't know how much, but it's like they who's go for so, I, I, like who's spending that much? I don't get it. Also, I, I had know. a binder full of Pokemon yeah. cards. And Do you it, still have it? No, <laughs> I don't. I'm like, my dad had, he talks about this all the time. I think he's really upset about it. He had like a uh, cases full of like old vintage comic books and his mom threw them all away. And he's like, that would be worth millions now. He was like, I would be like a quadrillionaire. Yeah. Wait, my dad has the same thing. Yeah, I could have been giga rich my off Pokemon cards. Wait, my, actually, I think we still have my Pokemon cards and my comic book things. My dad has a giant case of comic books, but they're you in the get garage. Them well, they're like not in good, he's like, like his comic books like he just mm -hmm. didn't take care of them or anything mm -hmm. but he has them all did you guys take care of your cards when you had them as yeah. children yeah i had the the binder that had the it would be like three by three and mm -hmm. you would place all the cards in the slot and then i would take them to school and i'd show all the other kids and I'd be like can we trade I'd be like no fuck you <laughs> as like a nine-year-old i was like an, an appraiser I'd be like put the and gloves on take, <laughs> take oh the, the card out <laughs> I just put my little sticky little hands on them and then I gave them to my brother and he put them in the binder. 
I am so surprised by that number and also mildly upset. But yeah. yeah. More than the Super Bowl grass. Well, don't get me started on the Super Bowl grass. <laughs> Wait, what's okay. up with the Super Bowl grass? The Super Bowl grass was near, it was almost a million dollars to like make and maintain the grass that was used at the most recent Super Bowl. I think it was $800,000 and it was like freshly planted grass that they put on this like field thing that they would put away every day and then bring back out for sunshine and water. And I'm like, you're spending a million dollars on grass. That's how much money the NFL makes to just be spending a million dollars on grass. Actually, speaking of Super Bowl, this is a weird, weird tangent, but mm. do you guys notice a couple people were in Super Bowl commercials this year? I didn't year. see any Super Bowl I just commercials. We just Rihanna. Yeah, we just watched Rihanna. Oh, oh, I, was I watched Bowl four of the commercials. commercials. I love the commercials. Um, but. I believe Mr. Beast was in one. Um, oh. I think he was in like the main like Super Bowl, whatever the number is, commercial. And then uh, Logan Paul and KSI paid for a Super Bowl commercial, oh. which must have been a ton of money. That's what did they do crazy. in their commercial? Theirs was for their energy drink. Oh. I have oh. no idea if I can talk about this on the podcast. So I like, cut it out. Like, if not. I don't know which of the Paul brothers did the bad thing, but that would really suck because I feel like a lot of people are in my boat and now one brother's just, you just like, you could be known as that brother. They, they're both. Yeah. The, the <laughs> older one kind of goes through like, hey, I'm back. Okay now. And then he gets dunked again. The, the, the younger one is typically just bad across the board. Logan Paul boxes now. Or both of Jake, them do. Oh, they both box. Yeah. Jake Paul oh, did the. Jake. Wow. That is, Logan, Logan and Jake are such similar the names to me. Like those are exactly the same type of name. Mm. So I, yeah. they, their identifier is one of them went into the suicide forest and yeah. one of them didn't. And they, yeah. but it could have been both. Well, Logan's the one who did the suicide forest, but I would say public opinion of Jake is worse. Because he's just a complete shithole. <laughs> nice. I can't even, like, my brain cannot even comprehend what he could be possibly doing <laughs> that is... Anyways, yeah. glad that yeah. they can just pay for a Super Bowl ad. Well, because Logan seemed to have come back and was like, hey, I'm an okay guy now. Like, my, my head's on straight. And then he just recently did a huge crypto rug pull. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Great. Well, cut that off if you need to. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, Toast, <laughs> would you like to take us to our last item? The last item on um, guess the price is not even guessing the price. It's our <laughs> spinoff segment. Guess <laughs> the height. <laughs> this That's is the most awesome. Sean thing ever. <laughs> I also, I just look over and his face is like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to guess the height of the fictional Pokemon. We don't know Pokemon. Gengar. Can I Google mm -hmm. what that looks, who that I, is? I can show you, can you Google yeah. Google Gengar. He's a purple ghost. Be careful if you Google it, it'll say the height probably. Here's a hint. Just show me. Yeah, I'm gonna show you a photo. <laughs> Ghastly. This is how. Oh. Oh. Ghastly is 4'3". So he he be so <laughs> Haunter is 5'3". What? Ghastly okay, is so 4-3. The, so it goes Ghastly turns into Haunter into Gengar. So the first the first evolution of it is 4. 4, four foot 3. And then the next one is 5-3. Five, 5-3. Three. Three. So the third one... Is the biggest be, one? The third the one's biggest the biggest one. one. Oh, the one you just saw. Oh, it could be smaller. Is this a trick question? Because shouldn't it be 6-foot-3? There's no way it's 6-foot-3. Well, it goes 4-5. to five, then you can I know, play. I know, but it's Sean, okay? And I know that Sean didn't make this, but Sean picked this. And he gave us the hint. So there's no way. You think it's really big? Well, think about a hint I would give you. Yeah, exactly. That's what why I know hint? it's not 6-3. He said his hints were that the pre-evolutions were 4-3, three, 5-3. Three. <sighs> Jody has five seconds. Three. One. All right. What are your answers? I wrote six three because four, five, six. I wrote twelve foot because I feel like he's really big. <gasps> I wrote six nine because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is DSG Toast. Gengar is four eleven. What? <laughs> he's a baby. <laughs> What? 
Yeah, I'm this surprised by that. This is upsetting. Because in the games, I feel like he's always taller than the Pokemon trainers. Yeah, he's like massive. Yeah. I, don't know, I think they're wrong. Yeah, they probably got it wrong. Well, thank you for watching that segment of Guess That Height. <laughs> 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 and thank you for watching this entire segment of Guess That Price. And of course, thank you for watching this whole podcast. Um, the <laughs> offline TV podcast. That is, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Wait, are we done? I think you've got some notes over there. <laughs> the outro? Yeah. Thanks for watching. We did that. Let us know what you thought in the comments below, but we never read the comments. <laughs> Ouch. I'm gonna I'm a be real with you viewers. We don't read the comments. You guys could be typing whatever you want down there. I read them sometimes. No, no, that's true. I'm, I'm gonna read them because they're gonna let us know if they lost their virginity or not. We have to that's read them. That's true. Oh, that's yeah. true. I will um, actually read this one just for the virginity. I'm yeah. very interested. <laughs> no liars. You can't lie. Write the age that you lost your no, virginity. Don't do, don't or, the, or the date. Yeah, yeah. And tell me the story. No. Yeah, tell the story. It's okay. <laughs> We should each go around and tell the story how how we lost our virginity. That for Patreon. Yeah, that's for after, Patreon. After, <laughs> for <soon> in. <laughs> um now we're gonna film our extended after dark segment. Speaking of that you can find at our Patreon. Thanks to all our supporters, and we'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Sorry if I spoiled the last ones for you. <laughs>